Welcome, I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we continue studying the, com the concept of compositionality and how it works as far as the Paninian grammar is concerned. We have said that as far as the speech that is produced as per the description of the Paninia Shiksha which we studied earlier, this speech is one indivisible unit as far as the process of communication is concerned. It is the grammarians who by applying the methodology of Anvaya and Vyatireka as also described and also studied by us, described by the Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali, how the components of this one indivisible speech are carved out and are stored. We also studied how these components can further be segregated into its own components by applying the same technique of Anvaya and Vetireka as described in the Vyakarana Mahabhashya which we have studied before. So we also stated that this concept of compositionality exists in the Paninian grammatical tradition at three levels namely the meaning level, the artha level, the word level, the shabda level and also the accent level namely the swara level. We have studied how this principle works as far as the artha level is concerned and also the shabda level is concerned. We also said that both these artha and shabda levels they correspond with each other. The corresponding components at the meaning level in the artha level correspond with the components figured out in the shabda level. We also said that it is this meaning level which is considered as the cause and shabda is interlinked with this meaning level. We are still talking about the so called programming or the linguistic plane which exists in the intellect. We also used the terms Arthakasha and Shabdakasha to describe these phenomena. Now what remains is the compositionality at the level of swara or accent, this is what we shall study in this present lecture. So the compositionality of swara can be summarized in the following manner as shown on this particular slide. So the divisions correspond with the divisions that exist at the shabda level and also at the Vakya level. So Vakya Swara 1 is made up of three constituents for example because there are three constituents in the meaning as well as Shabda. So there are three constituents as far as the Swara is concerned as well. Padaswara 1 plus Padaswara 2 plus Padaswara 3 and there is this plus sign which is marked in red with some purpose as was discussed earlier in, in with regards the meaning as well as the 
word level, artha as well as the shabda level, the plus sign shown over here is what constitutes the swara of the vakya exclusively. Just as the plus sign shown in the similar equation in the meaning explanation also indicated the vakyartha exclusively and also the vakya exclusively, so also this plus sign over here indicates the vakya swara which is nothing but the combination of padaswara which are presented over here. So, padaswara is presented by the respective padas, but the swara which comes out as a result of the combination of these padas is what is considered as vakya swara which is what is shown by the plus sign over here. This is the general case. So, vakya swara can be shown to have been composed from the swara of the padas and the padaswara in its turn can be shown to have been composed out of the swara that is assigned to prakriti and the swara that is assigned to the respective pratyaya which is added to that prakriti. So, padaswara 1 is made up of prakriti swara 1 plus pratyaya swara 1, padaswara 2 is made up of prakriti swara 2 plus pratyaya swara 2 and padaswara 3 is made up of prakriti swara 3 plus pratyaya swara 3. Once again the plus sign over here is shown in blue ink primarily once again to highlight the same fact that was highlighted at the vakya level namely the padaswara is exclusively the swara of the combination of prakriti swara and the pratyaya swara. Prakriti swara will be marked in a particular manner Pratyaya swara will be marked in a particular manner by the rules. Now when prakriti and pratyaya they both come together, the prakriti swara and the pratyaya swara also comes together and it is this combination which gives rise to a different swara altogether which might sometimes change the prakriti swara or the pratyaya swara, sometimes it may not change. Sometimes it may just retain one of the two, namely the one that is stated later on and so on. So, but the point is that it is this plus sign marked in blue which marks the Padaswara exclusively. So, this Vakyaswara to this Vakyaswara the contributions come from Prakriti swara and Pratyaya swara plus their combinations, respective combinations. This is how the swara is described in the Paninian grammar in general. And once again, it corresponds with the Shabda level as well as the Artha level. So now let us take the concrete examples to illustrate the point of compositionality in relation to the accent. When we studied the compositionality of artha and also the shabda, we studied the examples in terms of 12 sentences. We classified them into two groups. The first 6 sentences forming the first group and the second 6 sentences from 7 to 12 forming the second group. We call them data set 1 and data set 2. On this slide, we have presented to you the data set 1, namely the sentences numbered 1 to 6 together with the accent marks and that is why they are shown here as data set 1.1. And so the second data set together with the accent mark will be shown as data set 2.1. Now here you see that there are some accent marks which are provided notably there is this vertical bar on top of this letter m, on top of the vowel a and also a horizontal bar below this letter ra or a. These are the accent marks. Then there are words like gachati which have no symbol, no accent mark shown. So what is the meaning of these accent marks? We shall study this in a while. 
But the point is that here is a data set marked with the accent information. This is very crucial. We shall also study that this is a sentential accent. When we break down the components of this sentence into the padas or the words, we will find different accents. So, we will look at the prakriti swara as well as the padaswara in a moment. So, now gramam gachati ramaha is one sentence and then it can be shown to have the constituents in the form of three words gramam gachati and ramaha and so on. And as we know that this data set consists of certain amount of left hand side elements which are also known as roots which are classified into two once again the nominal root and the verbal root and the right hand side elements which are also classified into two certain elements get attached to the nominal root and certain elements get attached to the verbal root. So, if we now go to those atoms, the linguistic atoms, we will note down these accents on those atoms. For example, grammar has this accent mark on top of m, gum has no accent mark, rama has the, vertic, the horizontal bar below ra, m there is no accent mark. Shala has got an accent mark on top of La, Mohana has got an got two accent marks below the letters Mo and Her and Na is not accented, Drisha is not having any symbol of an accent. On the right hand side we have Pratyayas namely Am and this is having a horizontal bar below it, A is also having a horizontal bar below T is also having a horizontal bar and S does not have any accent mark. So, these are the accents that are marked on the Prakriti and the Pratyaya by the Paninian grammar and we should study what these symbols mean. We have already seen that there are three accents Udatta, Anadatta and Svarita which are the features of vowels. So, the first thing and the foremost thing is that accent marks are the accents are the features of vowels and they are not the features of consonants. So, S over here does not have an accent, there is no symbol of an accent, but it does not have an accent. Why? Because it is a consonant. So, each and every vowel can be said to have the quality of getting an accent. Now, the point is that as far as the Paninian grammatical tradition is concerned, the general system that is followed is the following. The Udatta accent and we shall have this, these rules studied later on, but for the time being we can say that an Udatta is not marked by any symbol and in one particular word there has to be at least one Udatta, the remaining are Anudattas. Now, the anudatta that comes immediately after an udatta is called svarita and is and has this particular symbol, the vertical bar on top of the letter. So, in the word grammar, it is this a which is udatta and therefore it is not marked, and this a which is an anudatta which comes immediately after this udatta, therefore it becomes a svarita and gets this sign of a vertical bar on top. This is how the accent on the word grammar can be explained and in fact there are sutras also which explain this grama, dinancha and so on. Next we go to gum and here we observe that there is only one vowel. So, this vowel gets accented, this vowel gets the udattasvar and obviously that is why it is not marked. In the word rama, this Udat, this a at the end is marked as udatta 
will be without any symbol and this is anudat so it is marked with the horizontal bar below it in the word shala the word shala consists of the first vowel a as udat therefore this second vowel a is anudat but it comes after anudat therefore it is marked as a swarita marked with the vertical bar on top of it this is how the accent in shala can be explained and there is a sutra also gehar thana mastriyam that supports this next we have the word mohana which is the proper name mohana and so by another sutra fishonta udattaha this has na as udatta so all the vowels that come before it they are shown as anudatta by the horizontal lines below them similarly next we have the verbal root drusha which is also accented and without any symbol accent symbol the verbal root drusha as well as gama they have udatta by the rule dhatoh now we come to the pratyayas here is am this is marked as anudatta because this is a sup and all the sups are marked as anudatta next we go to a and this is marked as anudatta because this is possessing the it sound p because it is stated as shap in the initial enunciation so this is a pit sound and any pratyaya which is pit takes an anudatta vowel there is no udatta over here same is the case with t because it is tip so it is pit therefore it is marked as anudatta and obviously s because it's a consonant it cannot have the udatta vowel on to on it so this is how the paninian grammar states the accents on the prakriti and pratyayas in a rule based fashion now from them the pada swara is generated so we take the word grammar which has an udatta in the initial position and therefore this ma has become an anudatta but it comes after the udatta therefore it is marked as a swarita followed by this am which is anudatta and as we see the resultant form consists of only one a there is an euphonic combination also known as sandhi in which this anudatta and this anudatta they both come together and the resultant accent therefore also is anudatta so this udatta accent retains itself and so in the word gramam which is the pada which is a combination of grama and am the accent of a is retained so this a is still udatta and this a is shown as swarita because this is an anudatta which comes immediately after an udatta vowel so this is shown with a vertical bar on top of it this is which is a mark of a swarita next we go to the derivation of the form gachati in which we see that gam is udatta without any symbol a is anudatta with a horizontal bar t is also anudatta with a horizontal bar now when these are put together because both these two are anudattas and this is anudatta so this udatta retains itself and so we get this kind of accent symbol initially and finally we get this gachati having this a marked as swarita because it is coming immediately after an udatta in g now this is also an anudatta but because this anudatta comes after an anudatta which is marked as swarita therefore this is also unmarked but this t and this g should not be confused this is udatta this is not an udatta this is anudatta as far as the word ramah is concerned it consists of two components rama having this a udatta and s without any udatta so the joining of these two the combination of these two will give us the word ramah where this accent of a on a will be retained similarly in shalam we have shala marked as initial udatta and am 
same is the case with gramam and so the sandhi the euphonic combination will generate the same accent as gramam so this initial vowel still is accented in mohana where the last mohanaha where the last vowel is accented in mohana and sa because it's a consonant it is not accented so it will retain the accent of a end and then we have mohanaha having the final vowel accented similarly pashyati will have the similar process of as gachati and so it will have an initial vowel accented which will be then converted into this form where the initial vowel is accented and, and the rest of them they are anudatta so the anudatta that comes immediately after anudatta will be marked as swarita as shown here this is how the padaswara as far as this sentence will work and the principle of compositionality will be able to help us in this regard now when we construct the vakya swara from the, this prakriti swara and the padaswara here is one example so now we have gramam with the initial udat gachati as a separate pada having initial udat once again and ramaha as a separate pada having the final vowel udat this is the status now when these three words come together in this order gramam gachati ramaha now what happens is this sentential effect takes place and now this gramam it retains its accent but look at gachati now gachati will have all the anudatta vowels this is the sentential effect because gachati comes immediately after gramam or any other nominal word so then it gets all the anudatta vowels and ramaha is in the same form now when this gachati comes in the initial position of the sentence then it retains its own form see the accent the word gachati as shown here is similar over here that's why the word gachati is shown in the red ink on this slide so now from this it is clear that when the verb gachati occurs in the first position it retains its pada accent which is a combination of the prakriti pratyaya accent but when the verbal root gachati appears in the second position following the word gramam then it loses its pada accent and acquires the new sentential accent this is the sentential accent this is the vakya swara as shown in the first sentence over here gramam gachati ramaha now similar thing can be said with respect to the second data set 2.1 where we have sentences once again 1 to 6 from 7 to 12 ramena gramo gamyate ramena shala gamyate and so on and so forth now once again we have the prakriti pratyaya swara explained to us in the similar fashion the left hand side is the same now the right hand side is different so we here we have inner once again this is a sup therefore it has got both anudatta sa because it's a consonant cannot have an accent udatta ya is accented because of the general rule that the pratyayas are accented in the beginning te is also accented and now when we join these together we get the following padaswara so ramena now here is an interesting point here this ma has a udatta accent followed by e and anudatta accent and as a resultant form we see a appearing over here now this this a is a combination of an udatta a and anudatta e so a combination of an udatta and anudatta is always an udatta this is stated by the rules ekadesha udatte na udatta and therefore this a becomes udatta similarly 
in other case mohanena this a is udat this a e is anudat the resultant form is a which is because which is a which is an udat over here now if we construct once again the sentence accent from these pada accents this is the position that we get ramena gramo gamyate where the verb gamyate which has an initial in which has a middle accent madhya udatta it loses this udatta accent and then it all of its vowels are termed as anudatta and because they follow this swarita they are unmarked but they are in fact anudatta but when this gamyate occupies the first position in the sentence then it retains its own accent once again this is a particular peculiar phenomenon as far as paninian grammar is concerned as some as far as sanskrit is concerned that a verb retains its accent when it is in the initial position but if it appears in any other position it loses its accent this is the sentential feature this happens because of this combination that is part of the sentence so we can make some general rules which mark the accent for example some of them we have already discussed the accent known as udatta is not marked with any symbol for example in gam the accent known as anudatta is marked with a horizontal bar below the letter as in ina the accent known as swarita is marked with a vertical bar on top of the letter like ramena the anudattas which are described as ekashruti are also unmarked as was the case in the verb which comes at the final position then some other general rules which can be stated about the compositionality of accent are the following each verbal element prakriti pratyaya and pad contains at least one udatta remaining all vowels are anudatta very basic principle the anudatta vowel that comes before anudatta is marked with a horizontal bar below the anudatta vowel that comes after anudatta is termed as swarita and is marked with a vertical bar above this is also called as paratantra swarita the anudatta vowels which come after the paratantra swarita are termed as ekashruti and are unmarked as is the case with gamyate gamyate because it's a verb and it appears in the non initial position so all the vowels are anudatta but because they come after the swarita so they are unmarked they are called ekashruti the other word used for them is prachaya but when these anudatta ekashruti vowels are followed by an udat so if after this gamyate if there is an udat the vowel that comes over here then this te will be marked as anudat with a horizontal bar below it just as it happens in this case ramena just as this na instead of swarita is marked as anudat similarly this te will be marked as anudat rather than an ekashruti the purpose to do so is to indicate that the next vowel is udat generally all the verbal roots have their final vowel udat by the sutra dhato 61162 generally all the nominal roots have their final vowel udat by the sutra phishonta udat by phit sutra 1 generally all the suffixes have their initial vowel udat by the sutra adyudattascha 313 a verb or a thinganth has one udat only when it appears in the initial position in the sentence or is part of a subordinate clause otherwise it does not have one udat to conclude we can say that accent plays a crucial role in the formation of padas as well as vakyas rules transform the prakriti swara and the pratyaya swara into the pada swara and the rules transform the pada swaras into a vakya swara order of words is therefore significant from the point of view of accent in sanskrit
even though we have seen that from the point of view of the meaning, the order is not important, but from the point of view of accent, the order of words is important. So, we can draw some overall conclusions at this stage, at the end of this discussion on compositionality, namely that the principle of compositionality does play a very crucial role in the formation of sentence meaning, sentence and sentence accent in Sanskrit. It is this principle which protects the scientificness of the enquiry in general. It is this principle that also allows multiple interpretations of a given text based on multiple possible compositions. But at the level of speech production, comprehension and communication, we also need the principle of non-compositionality in divisibility. So, compositionality and non-compositionality or indivisibility both go hand in hand in the overall picture related to language. And this is what is summed up in the Shabda Sutra called Sarva Satyavada Siddhantaha. So now in the coming lecture we shall take a recap, review what we have studied so far and will explain the future plan of action that we are going to undertake in the subsequent lectures. Thank you for your attention.